Welcome to a short video tutorial on matrix model template from Adaptive Processes. I am Ellen, Principal Consultant and Trainer with Adaptive. In many of my training sessions, uh, many of my students and participants ask me a very simple question. Is there a way that we can ensure complete capturing of requirements uh, from a user interface perspective? This is an attempt to explain you a very nice modeling technique called matrix model, which can help you to do that. So let's start. Um, our matrix model template is part of our software requirement specification template. And there is a small video on software requirement specification template as well, which you can view it in our channel. In this video, I would focus on matrix model. So let me go to the matrix model and show you what all we cover uh, in matrix model matrix model actually comes from your prototype so what you first need to do is to build your prototype so this is an html prototype of one of our module called schedule management system and from this i have picked up few fields which i have explained in matrix model although each and every field is supposed to be explained in the model uh, just for the sake of video recording purpose i have taken only few fields so in matrix model what we do is to explain each and every control that you see on the user interface in a great way the advantage of matrix model is that it does not leave anything to the developer's imagination because um, in many parts of the world the developers may not be very experienced they may not have much of business knowledge so the common sense that we expect with developers in certain western countries may not apply in certain countries like india and other emerging nations so it's better that the business analyst or requirements analyst provides complete details about the controls so let's see what all things that we do so for example what we do is we start putting the control elements or the fields on the columns or it can be on the row as well it's just that uh, you can transpose the design as well i have just used one form you're free to choose anything and on this column if you see there are many aspects about the control or field that we are trying to explain so for example the first one is of course description which is um, what is this field about suppose i'm talking about plan start date it will say plan start date then what is the type of control you expect it to be is it a text is it a calendar is it a lookup you can define as you like then we define the data type what is the kind of data that we expect uh, so here it is number here it is text here it is date and text okay then coming to format do you expect a specific format so for example id is a positive number uh, the date format that uh, generally we recommend is dd mon yy because this avoids the confusion between Indian date format and American date format. Then we provide the size of the field because this is something that the business analyst or requirements analyst can determine how long or how big do you want it to be. So for example, name field can be up to 500. Okay. Then is it mandatory? Okay. So for example, if you see here, um, the dates are not mandatory because in the beginning you may not have an idea. Whereas the status is mandatory. Okay. Similarly, an ID is mandatory and ID is created. So identifying key is this field used for identifying the record. So here the ID field is used for identifying the record. On screen length means uh, suppose in the database you could store actually a much bigger uh, data, but on the screen you may not be able to show everything. So that is why we limit the field length and you could actually use a pop-up to describe all the details because otherwise the field will look very odd. On-screen height indicates uh, how big do you want it to be. Maybe for example, here I could have an on-screen height of 2 or 3. This is saying that um, the description field is slightly bigger field that I would like to show. Then whether it is editable or not. So if you see here, ID is not editable. Okay. Similarly name is not editable after you submit similarly plan start date is not editable after submitting but the resource name is editable that means you can assign different different people uh, 
um, and it is editable. Status is also editable because the status needs to be changed by the project manager. Then we also talk about horizontal alignment. So that means do you want the data to be left aligned or center aligned or right aligned uh, depending on uh, what is your preference. Uh, uh, even I have observed that in certain countries a certain preference is provided like in India we tend to uh, number align numbers into right whereas if you go to Middle Eastern countries many of them prefer numbers to be center aligned. Then we come to the validations applicable to a particular field. Say for example, the plant start date must be less than or equal to planned end date. It cannot be more than planned end date. And at the same time, it must be within the project start and end date. It cannot go out of the project dates. Same thing applies to planned end date and you can add more resources as you like. Now coming to lookups, see for example here we used a lookup uh, or a user defined value for status and I would like the statuses to be ordered in an ascending manner okay? and that's what I am mentioning here and then default value. This is something that I would strongly suggest um, all the um, requirements analysts to take note of. So for example default value for ID can be last id plus one so that means if i have created a schedule id which is 10005 next id should be 10006 name of course i cannot uh, default because that is something uh, which the user has to provide but plan start date i could default it to today's date and planned end date i could default it to today's date plus seven days resource i could default it to resource who has logged in and the status can be open okay um, so if you observe by making things defaulted to a particular value makes the application lot more usable otherwise the user has to fill in lot of details so you have to put your mind behind understanding uh, what fields can be defaulted automatically and in fact if you have filters on the page i would also suggest that you default those filters so that the data uh, to be retrieved reduces and this improves application for performance quite a bit. Then lookup seed values which is uh, suppose it's a lookup what are the seed values that I would like the developer to build in. So this is what I have given and uh, next control it's basically saying after I complete this where do I go. Okay so after I come to resource from resource uh, I go to save field maybe this is what I should say and there are uh, other three four fields which are not generally used much but if you are using a button like say save you can say on click it should save so for example I could have another uh, column here let me add so which is my save button so this is basically a button and rest all mostly will not apply all that and here I could say on click save data okay so this also has this uh, thing and then in case you are connecting to a legacy system or pulling data from a legacy system you could use three additional columns which is mainly saying legacy table column and transfer rule so this is something required if you are doing data migration or you are doing an interface to another system so this is how a matrix model can be built. The advantage is if we want some more attributes, we can always put it down. Um, I already have put about 20 attributes, but sometimes people actually need more than this as well. Like for example, um, uh, one of my client actually added a column here saying uh, likely value for uh, lookup. So that means uh, it, it may be suppose the status how many statuses you are likely to have maybe about 10 you are not going to have uh, more than 10 but suppose it's, it's a uh, lookup on employee name or uh, employee ID then you can actually have a lookup which will be very big maybe 5000 or something which is unusable in that case uh, you really have to find a way to implement it in a different way so instead of a lookup maybe you will implement it as an Ajax control or a smart lookup. 
hope uh, you found uh, something very useful and i would strongly recommend all my requirements analyst and business analyst friends to use such a template i have seen extremely good result by following this template because it does not leave anything to a developer's interpretation and hence um, the way the stakeholders want you can get it more or less correct sometimes i'll get a question that will the stakeholders really prepare this no you are there to prepare this and get it reviewed by the stakeholders so suppose i have a doubt on this i simply would mark this in yellow that means i want the stakeholder to take a look at these rules because maybe there are more than these rules that i know so i would like them to take a look on things which are i'm confident i can just put it the stakeholders can have a look um, but other than that uh, I, I don't see a need for the stakeholders to really um, make this template this template must be made by the requirements analyst or the business analyst but should be reviewed by the stakeholders for acceptance purpose uh, thank you and you can uh, watch many more videos on uh, requirements analysis and business analysis uh, in YouTube uh, or from our website. Our website is adaptiveprocesses.com and you can also write to us about your feedbacks and suggestions and needs to info, I-N-F-O, at the rate adaptive, A-D-A-P-T-I-V, processes, P-R-O-C-E-S-S-E-S, dot -E -E com. Thank you and see you again.